Suppose that your instructor gave you this evolutionary tree shown here, and all that she told you was that species X is more closely related to species C than it is to species G. And then based upon this information, you are told that you need to learn how to read these evolutionary trees. Okay, so it sounds like a little bit of an intimidating task, but I think together we can do this. First, let's try to remember a few definitions associated with evolutionary trees. First, these species along the right side of the evolutionary tree are called taxa. Species O and V and M and E and Q, those are all taxa as well. One taxa is called a taxon. These intersection points on the evolutionary tree are called nodes and a node represents an ancestor. So for example this node right here represents the ancestor of species X and species M. One more key term is a monophyletic group. This one's a little bit more complicated. A monophyletic group is a group of organisms including a common ancestor and all of its descendants. Whoa, okay, so what does that mean? Let's just think about an example. If we go down here to the bottom of the tree, I see that this is a node as we just talked about, which is an ancestor, and all of the descendants of this node would include species Q and species C. So this is a monophyletic group. We can do the same thing with other descendants on the tree and find other monophyletic groups. So for example, the one I just highlighted here includes this ancestor and then the descendants species E, Q, and C. And we can keep building back. So this is another monophyletic group. This one would include more of the species along the right side, species M, species X, species V, and it would all be descendants from this ancestor right here. And then the whole tree is also a monophyletic group based upon the ancestor on the far left. A couple other things to note. We could easily swap out the term monophyletic group for another term, and that term is clade. Clade and monophyletic group mean the same thing. Also, I recently just showed you that we can trace monophyletic groups from the ancestors, the nodes on the tree but also there are ancestors within each one of these branches. All of the existing organisms and species C descend from one common ancestor that's hidden somewhere in here. So this would also be a monophyletic group. The ancestor of all of species C, including all of its descendants, is a monophyletic group or a clade as well. It's also important to remember that time progresses from the base of the tree to its tips. So in this case, time is progressing from left to right. Okay, so let's review what our goal is here. First, our instructor told us that species X is more closely related to species C than it is to species G. And based upon this, we're supposed to learn how to read the evolutionary tree. I can think of some ways to read this evolutionary tree. Let's go over some possibilities. First, we could compare the distance between the branch tips, or we could compare the number of nodes between the species. We could compare the time to common ancestors, or we could compare the number of shared monophyletic groups. Let's apply each one of these methods to the evolutionary tree and see if it results in species X being more closely related to species C than it is to species G.
So we'll start with this top one. Compare the distance between branch tips. Okay, I can think of a couple of ways to do this. One way is just to look at the absolute distance along the right side. So species X and species G are this far apart, and species X and species C are this far apart. Hmm, looking at it like this, it appears that species X and is more closely related to species G than it is to species C, and that is the opposite of what our instructor told us. We could also count the number of species between them, but while well, I'm seeing one, two, three between X and C, and only one between X and G. So both of these ways of comparing the distance between the branch tips results in species X being more closely related to species G than species C. So this method must be incorrect. This is not a correct way to read the evolutionary tree. Let's move on then. Let's compare the number of nodes between species. All right, so between species X and G we have one node, two, three, four, and five. All right, so we have five nodes between X and G. What about between X and C? We have one, two, three, four, five. Five nodes between X and C. Hmm, so it looks like by this method that species X is equally related to species G and species C, but we know that's not true, so this method of reading the evolutionary tree must not be correct either. Well, let's move on to a third method, which is comparing the amount of time that has passed since each pair of species diverge from a common ancestor. Let's start by looking at how much time has passed since species X and species G share the common ancestor. All right, so if we trace back from species X all the way to the beginning of the evolutionary tree, and then do the same thing from species G, then the first point at which they intersect is where their common ancestor is. So in this case, the common ancestor between species X and species G is right here at this first node on the evolutionary tree. And then we can do the same thing for species X and species C. So again, we trace X back, then do the same thing for C. And I stopped early because I already know that they will intersect before the beginning of the tree trace C back, they intersect right there, then that means that the common ancestor of species X and species C is right here at this node. That shows that this method is correct. This is one way of reading the evolutionary tree. Species X and species C are more closely related than species X and species G because species X and C share a more recent common ancestor than do species X and species G. Great, so we have one method that works. Let's move on to the last possibility for a way to read the evolutionary tree, which is comparing the number of shared monophyletic groups. So what triangles can we draw that include both species G and species X? Think about the monophyletic groups that we saw earlier. They included a common ancestor and all of its descendants. So a monophyletic group that includes both species G and species X, well, only one I can see is the one that includes this common ancestor. So basically, it would be the one that covers the entire evolutionary tree. Is there any other monophyletic group that includes species X and species G? 
I'm not seeing one. So X and G must share one monophyletic group. What about species X and species C? Well, they share the monophyletic group that's already on the tree. The big one includes both species X and species C. Is there another monophyletic group that includes species X and C? I see one right here. This ancestor and all of its descendants, that includes both X and C. So we have the big one that we already had for species X and G that also includes species X and C, and then the smaller monophyletic group including species X and species C. So that's two monophyletic groups that include both species X and C. That means that X and C share more monophyletic groups than do X and G, and that means that species X is more closely related to species C than it is to species G. So this is another correct method of reading the evolutionary tree. So today we learned two incorrect ways to read an evolutionary tree, which were comparing the distance between branch tips and comparing the number of nodes between species. These both led us to incorrect results. We also learned two correct ways to read the tree. Comparing the time to a common ancestor resulted in species X being more closely related to species C than to species G. This makes sense from an evolutionary perspective, since differences accumulate over time. This is similar to saying that I'm more related to my cousin, with whom I share a set of grandparents, than I am to my second cousin, with whom I only share great-grandparents. The other correct way of reading the tree is to compare the number of shared monophyletic groups. This is just another method of determining how recently two groups have a common ancestor. The more recently the groups have a common ancestor, the more monophyletic groups they will share. Thanks for watching this video. It was produced by Leafcutter Media, and the content of this video is based on this recent science education research article.